It's a common known factor that people tend to confuse Murkumo with Nubatama and vice versa. Or that might just be a me thing. And to not make things any more confusing, let's tackle both clans with their new reveals for V Clan Collection Volume 5 and 6. Stand up! Bangano! Hey Carfighters, welcome back to another Carfight update and today we got the entire reveals for Murakumo as well as Nubatama for V-Clan Collection. So that means not only their new free cards, but also the reprints for those clans. So without beating around the bush, let's just immediately jump into these cards and we're gonna start off with the cards for Murakumo. And for Murakumo, we got an interesting new engine slash deck that might support the stealth beast archetype, but also might have some synergy with Shiryuki. Because first up, we got a brand new grade one in the likes of stealth fiend Tizen. And this grade one panda has the effect, although when this unit is placed on the rig and circle by your card's ability, this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. So basically a 13k beater. This effect isn't very hard to fulfill as we have of course Neuro Yoga that can superior call this thing. But also a brand new grade 3 boss unit that is tailored around this card can synergize with this effect. But also a second skill which is on regular circle. When your unit's attack does not hit, which means any attack... If your vanguard is Shikigami Tamer Yogi, which is the brand new grade 3, cost, put this unit into your soul, look at the 7 cards on top of your deck, choose up to 1 grade 3 card from among them, reveal it, put it into your hand and shuffle your deck. So this is basically a grade 3 tutor. The only issue to have with this card is that it is very specifically tailored to a specific grade 3, so it's not going to be a generic support card. It can search any generic grade 3, but you cannot slot this in any other deck that doesn't rely on Hero Yogi. But also that it puts itself into the soul and then you check top 7. Which means there's a chance to whiff and you just lost the unit. Now this isn't the end of the world because you still get the soul. And there's a lot of value to be had with this soul. And even in the deck it's supposed to work. Even if it misses you actually don't mind it all too much. Because you're going to get value and you're going to continue your engine. Because this card goes to the soul. And maybe that's the more important part of this skill in the deck. But that will make more sense once we tackle the great free. Now moving on we got a brand new great. 2 in the likes of Stealth Fiend Fukun and Fukun has the same first skill which is although when this unit is placed in the record circle by your card's ability this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn same thing applies so it's a solid beater that's very generic as a 14k attacker but it also has the effect although on record circle when this unit attack does not hit in this case it's this particular unit if your vanguard is Shikigami Tamer Yogi cost put this unit into your soul choose all of your rear guards with the same card name as your vanguard and they get power plus 5k until the end of turn so again we see something that's very Murakuma like with the multi copy name thing and yes we have cards that allow us to meet this requirement like we have Metamorphox I think we even have uh, the grade 2 that can mill a card to get the name but also the new grade 3 Free builds towards this so this is a nice energy to empower your board meaning every subsequent attack is going to be more powerful every single time you're going to attack so the moment they are at five damage things can be very dicey if you have a couple of fukuns because that means you're gonna guard for a lot and don't forget shiryuki's in this clan so you can Put that on top of everything. Now, to make sense of the grade 1 and the grade 2, we need to take a look at the brand new grade 3, which is of course Shikigami Tamer Ryogi. And Ryogi has the effect, act on Vanguard Circle, once a turn, cause Counterblast 1. Look at the 5 cards from the top of your deck, choose up to 1 card with Stealthy in its card name from among them, call to the Ryogi Circle and shuffle your deck. If your opponent's vanguard is grade 3 or greater, choose up to 2 cards instead of 1. So essentially this allows you to plus, potentially plus 1 or plus 2, which is decent and it's very generic in the fact that it can search out any stealth fiend so it can search out grade 1 grade 2 which can be solid beaters it can search out the support cards for shiryuki or any of the newer stealth fiends that we saw with the introduction of your nora yoga so overall a pretty decent engine and this could be like a different boss unit for the newer yoga deck so you can maybe have those two cards as your boss units and both cards work wonders with the build around it so this could be an interesting engine but 
It also has two more effects, from which one is Auto Vanguard Circle. When a rearguard is placed by this unit's ability, that unit gets this unit's card name until the end of turn. So this is what we saw with the Grade 2, that it powers all units with the same Vanguard name, and because this card can superior call one or two units with its first effect, those will have the same name as the Vanguard, thus we see this condition where we can get a lot of power. And this then works with other cards that interact with having multiple cards with the same name on the field so that could be an interesting thing that then synergizes with this aspect of the card but that isn't where this thing stops because she also has a third effect which is auto vigor circle when the unit attack does not hit cost sold as two choose up to the same number of cards with stealthing in the card names from your drop as the number of additional rearguard circles call them to the additional rearguard circle so this is a multi-attack engine built in the card itself and honestly this effect is very nicely tailored together with the other cards we saw so far because not only does it cost two soul bless which means the grid one and grid two can basically fulfill for that cost because they go towards the soul and they can soul bless it out with this skill but then immediately you can recall those cards because you just soul blasted two stealth fiends and if you have two axle circles you can recall those two cards to those two axle circles and basically keep looping everything around every single turn over and over and over again so that's an interesting engine now of course and on the very first grade free turn it's only one you're gonna call then two then three then four if you can keep rewriting which makes this effect skill into the long game which can honestly be very powerful and with the new grid one and grid two also going towards the soul that means this synergizes very nicely with the shiro yuki engine because they also go towards the soul or build up soul and yes this effect costs two soul less just like shiro yuki but as i just explained you're probably gonna going to refund that soul immediately on the same turn so it doesn't take away from shiro yuki herself so you can have this like this relatively aggressive multi-tech engine with the application of the defensive play of shiro yuki that then also could be used during the offensive play because keep in mind we just superior called more cards, which also means those cards will have the same name as your Vanguard. So then if the grade two does not hit, suddenly a buttload of units are gonna get the extra 5k power. And if you have multiple copies of the grade two, you will stack multiple times the 5k power on your board. And keep in mind, because we can recall the grade two through this multi-tech engine, you can reuse or reload the same skill over and over and over again, which can be very devastating if your opponent's at four or five damage. So, it's an interesting engine that could either build upon Shiryuki, or maybe it can even build upon the Mandala Lord stuff that you interacts with having multiple names. But of course, it also synergizes very nicely with the Stealth Fiend Neura Yoga build, as it's all around Stealth Fiend. So overall, a very flexible card and engine that I can definitely see some potential moving forward. So I'm very curious how this is going to shape up Murakuma's engine. Now regarding for the reprints, I've been name dropping this card and the support cards quite a few times in the last couple of minutes. It's of course the original Shiro Yuki package. Now they already got reprinted in the original V-Clan collection uh, wave but now we see them once again. I think it's it's fine they're really good generic cards so i think it's a really decent reprint run maybe i would have loved to see the other shiryuki being reprint because i think that's getting a bit more expensive but i'm not too familiar with the card price on these cards now moving forward to the other ninja clan we've got the new dubatama support cards and this brings us to more evil or decoy token support but this is a little bit different from what we used to because first up we got a brand new grid one which is stealth beast magami and uh, magami has the effect act on rigor circle once a turn cost retire one of your grade zero rear guards and soul charge one so essentially you trade your evil decoy token for soul which then can view other effects like its secondary effect which is auto rear circle at the end of the battle, this unit boosted a rear guard, cost Soul Blast 1, and returned this unit and the boosted rear guard to your hand. So essentially, it allows you to bounce the entire column. This is very generic and can work with a whole plethora of playstyles for Numatama. I think this is a, a decent grade 1 that can definitely see some play in the right circumstances. Now, moving to a grade 2, we honestly have a very solid grade 2 because... Nubatama has a very obvious flaw, and that's that their grade 2 lineup is very lackluster. But this grade 2 might fix it a little bit, as we got Evil Stealth Dragon Kagugachi. And Kagugachi has the effect auto 
One is you can just place it on Vanguard Circle or Rearguard Circle, call to one Evo Decor token to the Rearguard Circle. It's a free plus one. It's 5k shield in the early game, which can give you a free one to pass potentially, or it can synergize with whatever engine you're trying to build. It can capitalize on having Evo, Evo Decoy tokens. So overall, it's a decent skill, but it also has another effect, which is act on Vanguard Circle, Rearguard Circle, once a turn, cause Soulless 1, and until the end of the turn, all of your Evo Decor tokens get boost and power plus 5k. So this is very similar to the Hanzo Grade 2, that also does the same thing with the Evo Decor tokens, but that caused a counter blast, if I remember correctly, but it did create a token while you do, uh, do that. This is a bit cheaper, but you don't create tokens, but it can synergize with this other effect, because you can ride on the Vanguard Circle, Call token to the back row center circle, then use the effect for Soul Blast 1 to give it 5k power and have a 14k finger attack, which means it's harder for your opponent to just simply guard it, because a trigger in that early stages isn't a no pass, it's a want to pass, which deter your opponent from probably going for that early defensive play. And at the same time, you just got the extra 5k shield, which means you can easily guard the next attack by just intercepting and you just say want to pass, and it doesn't lose you any value you by doing that or you can set up for your future play so i think this is a very solid generic grade 2 that's probably going to see some widespread play in a lot of decks for numatama moving forward but now that brings us to the new grade 3 for numatama and this is a very interesting one because this goes a bit in a different direction than what we've seen so far for numatama as we've got evil stealth dragon Magaroku Fugen. And Fugen has the effect, continues a Vanguard Circle. During your turn, all of your front row units get power plus 5k for each of your evil decoy tokens. So the more tokens you have, the more you empower your front row, which includes your Vanguard. So you could hit for maybe like plus 15k to your front row. Now keep in mind, if your back row is all filled with evil deco tokens, if you don't give them the boost power, then sure you have plus 15k power but actually it's like maybe plus 7k as you lose the 8k boost potential of just any normal grade one so it depends on your field stuff now if you have like one attacker and like four tokens you have like plus 20k to that unit which can be nice but it depends on your field setup. Now it also has the effect, continues a Vanguard Circle, if your opponent's Vanguard is great for your greater and you have three or more Evo Decor tokens, all of your front row units get critical plus one. So that's the reason why I said like plus 15k, because that then allows you to have the same scenario where your front row has plus critical, including your Vanguard, and that means everything is plus 15k and a crit. That combined with like certain cards within Nubatama can be quite annoying because they have like guard restricts and very annoying uh, finishers, but usually most of them don't have like crit pressure. Now you can add crit pressure to those cards, which can be pretty dangerous in the right circumstances. Now, so far this can be a bit iffy in the sense that you need to build a very specific field and it also takes away from your offensive play because you either need to have like three in the back row of Evo Deco tokens or like four to make something happen, which means your offensive is gonna lack a bit. But thanks to its third effect, that might not necessarily be the case because it has the fact, although Vanguard Circle, when your rear guard is returned to your hand by your card's ability, call to one Evo Decor token to an open rear guard circle, cost Counterblast 1, get an imaginary gift protect, and put it on that circle if you chose protect 1, it cannot be put. So this deck is going to build with, with protect 2 in mind. And it makes sense because you're going to heavily revolve around Evo Decor tokens, so those Decor tokens will then intercept for at least 15k on those markers. But... The interesting thing here is, is that you get Evo Deco tokens for free, where it's in most cases it costs you resources. And by bouncing back your units, you suddenly build up your board. And you can end up in a scenario where you have like four or five Evo Deco tokens going into your opponent's turn, which all can intercept. And if you have to counter blast to spare, a lot of them will be like 15k shield. Or if there was already a protect marker, maybe from 15k they go to 25k or even bigger. So the interesting thing here is that you can combine this with the bounce card to then generate a lot of shield or have cards that interact with tokens like retired tokens for value like we saw with the grade one those cards might become even better because instead of using resources to create a token and then use a token to get their effects you can now get tokens potentially for free depending on what cards allow you to bounce cards so this is interesting dynamic 
that might see a different approach to Numatama. And the thing that this card allows you to do is be very defensive and potentially stall the long game. Because against any deck that cannot retire your field, this is going to be very defensive. As you could easily end up with like four or five interceptors every single turn. Or at the very least, three interceptors. Which are most likely going to be 15k or maybe some are five. But you have cards in Numatama which can allow you to counter charge, which on place effects, and because you keep bouncing, you can keep counter charging and potentially use this counter best skill to create more protect tokens, more and more and more as the game progresses. So you start to stock up on these protect markers, which means it's going to get harder and harder to kill you. Because even guard restricts don't really do a lot against most interceptors. And against these stronger interceptors, you might have a tough scenario on your hands. And with the powerful finishers that Numatama already has access to, it does have capabilities to clear games out of nowhere, especially with the crit potential and the extra power if you have the Evo Deco tokens attached to everything. So I'm not too sure how good Fugen actually is going to be, but I can definitely see this card having stall potential in the right circumstances. It all depends if your opponent has ways to clear your field. If they do not, then this card could potentially be really good. But I think it's too early to say because we have to figure out how this deck is supposed to be built and how it is supposed to be played. But overall... I'm very excited about this card and I cannot wait to try it out if it actually has some potential. Now, in terms of the reprints for Nubatama, of course, we knew that we're going to get a reprint of the Evo Decor token. But we also see two promo cards being reprinted, which is Stealth Beast Shinshi Reso and Evo Stealth Dragon Gyokusen. And Gyokusen is a very nice one because it's a relatively new shop promo. So now it's very easy to get this card. And it's a very strong card that synergizes with a lot of archetypes within Nubatama. So I'm very happy to see this card as it's a very very flexible card that can work definitely wonders especially with this new build so i'm very curious about what we're going to see moving forward and overall the reveals are looking pretty spicy but that's my thought about this card let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of these cards as there's a lot to speculate with both murukuma and numatamas as usually there's always more than meets the eye with these two clans once they reveal new boss units so i'm very curious of what we're going to see and I can't wait what we're going to see next week because next week we know we're going to get Gear Chronicle. So a lot of very exciting stuff on the horizon. But with that said, I want to give a huge shout out to my Patreon supporters over Patreon.com slash Insider. You guys are amazing. If you want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, you can simply go to Patreon.com slash Insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I've missed a time leap. I'll see you guys in the next one.